The recent improvement in the exchange rate of the Naira to the dollar holds positive threats for the growth of the aviation sector, with the likes of Airpiece crashing fares on the Lagos to London route. Keen industry watchers have been uh, uh, believe that competition and service delivery are about to witness a revolution. Already, a number of airlines have announced levels of courts in ticket charges for passengers, while industry information indicates readiness to about uh, these airlines to compete for good market shares. Let's get this and put this into perspective. I'm being joined by a renowned aviation analyst, Mr. Wale Shadari, a friend of the house. It's good to have you in and happy Eid Mulud. Eid Mubarak, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Yes. yes. Well, it, it, it's funny to me that these airlines could come down this low. You know what was happening some months back? If you are not there, you cannot even go to the UK. <laughs> but now, it seems like... So, so what do you mean? Is it airpiece, inaugural flights, and all of that is changing the face of the game? I don't get it. I actually would not have loved to speak about anything concerning airpiece. Okay. Because, um, but I'm going to speak on that. Okay. Um, if you look at what has happened, hmm. it's so good for the people it's good for the people in the sense that um, it shows that when there's um, competition mm. um, passengers will benefit from it and what really happened before Epis came in was that um, the Naira appreciated mm. significantly in the last um, one month yes. and the federal government through the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria decided to pay the airline's backlog, the trap fund, which was one of the reasons, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, which was one of the reasons true. that made fares to be very, very expensive, particularly on the Nigerian routes. Again, um, this also forced the airlines to, to release their lower inventories. Because when we had that trap fund crisis, what the airlines did, because their monies were not with them, yeah. was trapped in Nigeria. And they had already bidded when Naira was maybe 700 mm. to, um, to a dollar. So by the time they get their money, that would have moved. They would have incurred so much debt, debt loss on, on, on their money. So they decided to close the lower inventories. What the lower inventories means is that you have the opportunity of buying ticket at very um, uh, low, low rates, rate. then it start graduating to the higher uh, higher one. Yeah. So they didn't give Nigerians the opportunity to get the lower inventory. They took it up, and it was very strategic. It was strategic in the sense that by the time they get their money, hmm. Naira would have depreciated then. So they took it higher. So um, the central bank had giving them their money, and NANTA, the National Association of Nigerian Travel Agent, prevailed on them that since the reason for increasing fares or taking it to the lower inventory was because of your uh, trap funds, since the funds had been released, released, so you go back. Even the NCA, the regulator, mm. uh, 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 put a lot of pressure on them. So we started having, from 3 million, we started having like 2.5 it went down to 1.5, then it went back down to 1.2. So, Epis came in on that route. Um, and the airlines started adjusting. It was Epis that started first and went to the media houses to say he was going to crash first, yeah. you know, by maybe 20, 30%. Uh, people applauded the airline for that. And the international airline business is very, very brutal and is very, very unforgiving. So the airline sat down and said, okay, we've been enjoying this market for a very long time. So you want to, you, you have started the uh, fair war. Um, to be candid, FP started the fair war, you know, by lowering, by lowering the what they would have done is for the airline owner not to have gone to the media house to uh, media houses to say, ah, I'm going to crash fair, I'm going to do this. You just have sold your fair and you are not telling anybody anything. So the market became very, very competitive. 
um, thanks to all these factors, including airpiece, so uh, people can now travel um, uh, the way they want because the fares are as low as 700, 800, 900, depending from One two, uh, no, return. Return. Yeah, from wow. what it was before, 2.2 million, 2.3 million. Wow. Um, wow. All this, um, the Naira devaluation, yes. is, it wasn't as if the increased fares. Yeah. It was the Factors. factor, the Naira, you know, a dollar is stable. Mm -hmm. So if you say $600 and Naira was going to 1,000, uh, 800 so you need more money. So it went up. But now that the federal government has, in fact, fantastic one, what the CBN has done by making sure that the Naira has come down to, I don't know what it is today, yeah. but as it's I just said, so I don't think it's up to 1,000. So these are the factors that came to play, and uh, people can travel. And the competition is becoming keener. Yes, and when international politics. It yeah. is international politics. So if I, I was listening to Epis, yeah. he, he was complaining. Yes, maybe yes. rightfully. Yes. But you a lot know of problems you, are that weak. No, a lot you of problems. know what yes. you're going into. Wow. You know what you're going into, that this is international aeropolitics. Is the yes, we be prepared for it. It's uh, survival <laughs> of the fittest. You need to be prepared yes. for it. In as much as, and one good thing about it is that there's no government that has supported local airline than this current administration. Wow, that's a good one. Um, Mr. Fesos Keyamo did so much to ensure that Ari, um, sorry, Epis. Epis got Gatwick. Initially, it was uh, they were working on Heathrow, mm -hmm. their premier airport, but uh, because of the slot issue, uh, Heathrow doesn't belong to the government. It belongs to uh, private sector oh. people and is a very, very busy and congested Airport, terminal. Yes. So yes. it was back and forth, back and forth negotiation before they eventually say, okay, help is go to Gatwick. I don't have any problem with that. People talk about Heathrow. To me, anywhere in London, you can go to yeah. London City yeah, London. Airport. Uh, London is London. Yeah. So that became... Um, issue for um, Epis and uh, the minister. But the minister has been, honestly, uh, on this Epis matter, um, the federal government, through the Minister of Aviation, must be um, applauded for all the things they've done. Um, and I am also thinking that they will also do that for all the other airlines, not Epis. But the minister has assured that. Um, what they have done for EPIS, they would do it for any willing Nigerian airline that want to take the plunge into international um, operation. So it is brutal. So I felt worried when um, Mr. Nyuma was going everywhere to say, oh, this is this, this is that. Yes, I sympathize with him, but if you are able, I, I think you should just concentrate on um, how to build that route. He's going to have teaching problems. As, a, uh, as an airline from Nigeria. You have to improve on your service. You also have to somehow. But the danger for him is that there's a threshold to which you cannot go in your pricing. The foreign airlines can decide to say they want to take London for $300. But because they have the deep um, pocket, pocket to sustain it, but if you do that, uh, if a local airline does that, mm -hmm. he won't even be able to cover his cost of operation. And that is why Mr. Nyema is rightly shouting, okay. complaining that, ha, ah, this thing, they want to kill us, so they want to further bring this thing down. Yes, the passengers are going to be the biggest uh, beneficiary of, of this. It. But you also look at it that... Um, and the airlines too, we have to dig. Yes, they they have deep pocket. The foreign airlines, they can recover whatever they are going to lose on this route, on on other route. route. Uh, let me give you an example. Emirates has stopped coming to Nigeria in the last yes, two years. We hear they were coming in back. Yes, is that true? But do you know one something that Emirates made the highest profit ever in its entire existence last year? even without the Nigerian route. So what it tells you is that they can absorb 
this shock by lowering the fare. But it's good for all, all of us. Let us enjoy it while it lasts, mm -hmm. understand? But at the same time, um, Epis has to, I don't know, he has to get a lot of resources to finance it. So, like I said, uh, international aeropolitics is brutal. It is brutal. It's brutal. If you don't have the deep pocket and you don't have the goodwill, it will be very, very difficult to, to compete with these airlines that have been there for over 100 years, 50 years, that um, they have 500 aircraft. Um, they turn out profits every year in the, in the range of $6 billion after tax on all the rest. So you begin to look at it that um, how are we going to compete with them? Even the minister said it last week that Nigerian airlines will find it very, very difficult, extremely difficult to compete with their, the big foreign airlines like British Airways, like Lufthansa, like Delta, because airline business um, has a lot of things that go with it. You also, EPIS also needs to begin to think of interlining. I know it's, a, it's still very young. They just started like a week. Ah. So we should be patient with them. And I want to believe that some of these things that they, they are seeing will also strengthen them to make them stronger. And you know, we've had about four airlines that went on that. Yeah, road. yeah, I think it's Arik's Medview. Yeah, Arik, Medview, Bedview, UK. Uh, Virgin, Virgin. Uh, Virgin, Nigeria. Okay. So um, I believe that uh, we should all support um, uh, Air Peace. It's an indigenous. It's indigenous, right. but. Um, um, it's not about emotional blackmail. Yeah, yeah. It's because I'm paying for it. I'm looking for the best fare. I'm looking for the service. I'm not saying they're not going to provide the service, but um, uh, people that have flown a particular airline for a very long time or stayed with a brand for a very long time, at times, not Difficult. in all cases, to shift. And there's what they call the loyalty program. The loyalty program is that um, is some of this program that the airlines do to win customers to themselves to make sure that um, um, they, they get hold of you yeah. as long as possible. They give, begin to give you miles if you begin to fly them frequently. So they begin to give you miles, you accumulate that miles. Once you accumulate, accumulate uh, the miles, you can use it to fly. To fly. Free. So... Um, uh, a journey of uh, 1,000. <laughs> let's, 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 let's look so at other issues. Let's, uh, let's pray for air peace and hope that uh, they were able to beat the, they were able to compete as well. And like I also said, I hope what we are seeing now, I wish we can see this in the domestic scene. Hmm. So what it tells you is that there is a collab, um, collusion, between the domestic airlines because if truly we want competition like we're seeing now it's just three airlines and look at what is happening okay. epis virgin atlantic and b and see what is happening yeah. in fact it's also affecting other airlines going to london like uh, ethiopia mm -hmm. uh, qatar um, who go through their hubs mm. understand why are we not seeing this in the domestic market why are we not seeing this uh, competition in the domestic market mm. so like i said is a healthy rivalry hmm. is a healthy rivalry it right. shouldn't be let, let, let's quickly look at our time is really <laughs> fast spent on this topic yeah. let's quickly look at um aviation format dangote refinery is churning out aviation yes format. yes and do you think that is going to and what other things should you be looking yes. out for the sector in, in yes the dangote issue i think um wasn't last year or Two years I came on this program, I said, um, I hope the Dangote refinery will come on stream very quickly. Um, but we are seeing the type of a disruption, positive disruption in the system. With Dangote refinery, um, jet fuel is going to be cheap. cheaper. Diesel, yeah. fact, the marketers are talking about yes, 860, I someone before I came on 60 this, uh, now, yes. something that was about, about 1002 uh, or yes. 1001. Yes. So we are beginning to see the positive step of this administration and, um, um, you know, by trying to collaborate with the private sector. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a win-win uh, for the aviation industry. But my fear is this, you know, each time um, prices go up, we find it difficult to reflect it in the reduction of um, those prices. So we hope, although jet fuel alone is not 
only uh, the things airlines spend money on. Yeah. They also cost of operation, um, landing and parking and all the rest. But let us begin to see um, a kind of um, reduction in fares if JT1 comes down to maybe 100 naira. Oh, no, sorry, I said 100 naira. <laughs> if it comes down to 700, 700 naira, naira, because now I think it's about 1,300. Uh, 100 naira per liter. So we, I think in some places it's even as high as 1,500 per liter. So um, let us hope that this will begin to have positive impact on the economy, on the aviation industry, because the aviation industry is an economic enabler. Uh, enables a lot of um, um, activities um, and has catalytic effect on every sector that surrounds it. Uh, so, uh, we are very hopeful. We hope that the Dangote refinery. Then, for the industry as yes. a whole, yes. Um, yes, we started slowly, uh, but I'm seeing positive signs with some of the, the steps um, the minister has taken in some quiet years. But the problem is that let us wait and see how those steps are going to materialize and how we're going to benefit from it. If we're able to push them through, um, just a um, few weeks ago, he was um, um, in Toulouse, France, um, to meet with Airbus uh, representative on how Nigeria can exit the blacklist. Uh, you know, Nigeria was put in the blacklist of Lesos and um, the Cape Town Convention, we violated it uh, because what happened is that our airlines, they get aircraft from Lesos. They give them this aircraft to operate, make money, and send them money. But what we do, or some of them do, is that when they default, they now rush to court to get injunction to detain the aircraft when those people want to take their aircraft out. So, and Nigeria is a signatory to the Cape Town Convention. We ratified it. So, the NCA is like the like the, if you take loan, what's the, this okay. uh, that stands for you? Okay, shorty. Shorty. So that in, if you default, NCA is going to ask those yeah. lessons to come and pick their yeah. because we already signed that Cape Town Convention. So we violated that and we're put in the blacklist. And that is why it is very, very difficult for Nigerian airline operators to, to get aircraft on dry lease. What dry lease means is that They'll give you the aircraft. Yeah. You are like a part owner of that aircraft. You will run it like your own. You just pay them, the crew, everything. Um, but for dry lease, you're paying more because they will give you the aircraft. They will maintain the aircraft for you. Uh, they will put their crew put on Put your crew. Yes. So at the end of the day, you, you may not even make enough money to pay for that lease renter. So that mm -hmm. is what the minister went there to do to see how Nigeria can exit that blacklist. And they've assured us, the leader of um, that group, uh, Aviation Working Group, uh, Geoffrey Wool or something, has promised to look into it and um, seen the commitment of Nigeria to say Nigeria will exit that, um, that blacklist. blacklist. So it's a positive one for Nigeria, but the problems are still there. Uh, infrastructure, the president recently approved I think about 42 billion naira for navigational inf um, infrastructure, um, physical um, uh, infrastructure at the airport. So we are looking at those things. And um, Ibo May is also doing very well with their MRO, maintenance repair um, facilities in Uyo. We hope that before the end of this year, um, they would have been done with everything with that um, MRO so that we can. Um, repair our aircraft uh, internally, so save forex, and uh, it will be very, very, it will be cheaper. So those are positive things that I'm seeing for the innovation industry. But we still have challenges. Of course, the forex issue is 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 not as bad as it is, as it was. So it's better. Hopefully, it will get to 700, 800, 700, and this will have a lot of uh, impact on airlines. Who will need to get spare parts as a, at um, and they can get access for us. Nobody is talking about difficulty in assessing for us. Dollar is everywhere now. <laughs> they can assess the dollar oh at the iron in window. 
So I think the industry looks positive, but um, um, we shouldn't take our eyes off the ball. True. We should make sure that all these plans will bring them to fruition. And at least we'll be better rough than where we were. You've heard it from uh, Mr. Wale Shadari. He has said it. Positive outlook in all, but we need to watch. Thank you so much. It's good to... I know we can do this <laughs> even till past 3 p.m., but I must thank you so much for your thank time you. on the program as thank usual. You so we appreciate your coming into the studio. Thank you for Thank you. Well, before we wrap up, let's move to speak to Mr. David.